talking to two baby girl. Okay. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Hi guys, I'm Jessica and this is Not Brittany and you're watching Pixie Dust Productions. Um, this is my husband Chris. Say hi. Hi. Uh, and we are going to be discussing our Walt Disney World vacation that we recently went on. Walking down Main Street, USA. Look at the castle. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right, so before we discuss our personal vacation, I think we should probably, I'm enjoying this more than I thought I was going to, address how the parks are handling things right now. Because if you're watching this, when it comes out, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I don't know if you've heard about it, anything about it. Um, if you're watching this in the future, hopefully things are better now. Yeah, so I mean, really for me, the, the main thing was that it was li they were limiting um, capacity. So that was the whole reason that I was even so interested in going was because we didn't have to wait in the long lines. And in order to go, you had to have a reservation. You had to already have tickets purchased <clears throat> prior and then you had to make reservations for specific days for the specific days you would be at each park um, they were requiring masks um, and doing temperature checks uh, cover your mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing and maintain physical distancing hopefully things are better now <laughs> there, uh, there were some there were some shops that were closed some of the restaurants and, and eateries were closed, some of the shows weren't going on. There were no character meet and greets, um, there were no, there was no live entertainment or fireworks. Um, personally I feel like even with those things missing it was worth it because we ended up walking on to almost every single ride. Um, there were like there was hardly any wait time, so that was really nice. Um, we wanted to try to live life as normal as we would have otherwise. We didn't want to let this pandemic, I guess, um, stop mm. us from living life like we usually would. Um, hopefully things are better now. <laughs> and I know that wearing face masks all over the place isn't that normal, <laughs> but I think, I think that it was worth the Disney magic, don't you? I do, because we got a once in a lifetime opportunity to go to Disney without a billion other people. So. Yeah. Chris and I had never been to Walt Disney World before. We've been to Disneyland a handful of times because we live much closer to Disneyland. So we did notice that there were um, quite a few differences between Walt Disney World and Disneyland. And I think we're both in agreement that uh, Disneyland trumps Disney World. Yeah? I do. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of the same rides, but slightly different. And the majority of them we found were better at Disneyland. Um, and then the other thing is just that everything is so close to everything at Disneyland versus Walt Disney World where you have to drive from one area to the park, of the park to the next. Um, yeah, I don't know how park hopping would even work at Disney World because you know, you're gonna kill an hour, hour and a half just going between parks, which to me is crazy. Especially now, I mean, there is no park hopping that's allowed now, so that's one other thing that's different now. Um, but you know, they have a limited hours of availability that the, um, that the parks are open. So you're gonna kill a big chunk of your day. And churros, you guys. Disneyland churros are life. Talk about the churros in Walt Disney World. It's not, um, um, like four out of 10, would not really recommend. Um. <laughs> yeah, that was sad. The Dole Whip is equivalent though, so that's good. Yeah, and I don't know if this was just because of the pandemic and them having a bunch of shops closed and, and stuff like that, but there was, 
you know, I think we, we found two places in Magic Kingdom that had churros. Two. You know, you can't go more than like two feet at Disneyland without finding another churro cart. So, you know, you can always have a churro in your hand and be happy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so I guess now we will just go through each of the parks that we visited um, and kind of discuss what we thought of the parks individually. Um, so we had four days, so we went to each park once, um, and we started off with Epcot. So what did you think about Epcot? Lots and lots of walking, lots of space between everything, which like I said, for us isn't that big of a deal, but for the kids it was not fun. The rides were kind of boring too. Yeah, they, they definitely didn't have the best rides, but what would you say was your favorite ride in Epcot? I think mine was Frozen Ever After. Well, we, we were there during the Food and Wine Festival, which was oh. pretty cool because we did get to have, have some decent food. Yeah, that I think would have been a lot of fun without the kids yeah. um, because our kids, like most kids, are kind of picky eaters. So they're, they're not super adventurous when it comes to that stuff. Um, they stick to the three kid food groups, which is mac and cheese, corn dogs, and french fries. So. <laughs> All right, day two, <laughs> we went to Magic Kingdom, which was my favorite of the four parks. Was it your favorite? Not really. <laughs> okay, well this park was the most similar to Disneyland, if you guys are familiar with Disneyland at all. Um, it had a similar layout, it's the park with the castle, um, has a lot of the same rides as Disneyland slightly different variations of the same rides, I guess. Yep. Um, so yeah, this is, I feel like, the most magical of the parks. Definitely the most Disneyland-like. You know, I'm a big uh, fan of Indiana Jones, so I love, oh, they didn't have that there. Um, so. um, I love Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland. It's one of my, it is probably my favorite ride. Yeah that and Haunted Mansion, and they both were so disappointing at Walt Disney World. Yeah. Like, they were, I mean, they, if I had nothing to compare it to, I probably would have thought they were great. Well, so Pirates has, um, what, two drops at Disneyland, only has one drop at Disney World, and then you get to go into the whole intro Blue Bayou, you know, tour in the beginning uh, at Disneyland, which is really cool. It sets the stage, and that piece is missing from Disney World. Mm -hmm. As well as a few other scenes throughout it. I think that um, the one at Disneyland is about 15 minutes long, where the one at Walt Disney World is like 8 minutes long. So it's almost half the time. Yeah. A couple other things that are different. Um, stop laughing. <laughs> Where's Brittany? Can't work like this. A couple of other things that are different right now during these kind of strange... Why are you laughing? <laughs> A couple of other things that are different right now during these kind of weird times are um, characters. You, you can't go up and meet and greet them and take pictures with them and high-five Mickey Mouse. Um, they are doing some character cavalcades, they call them, which are like mini parades. And they aren't announcing what times they're coming through. They just come through at random times. Um, so you can catch uh, photos of characters doing that. And then sometimes they'll stand on like a balcony or something somewhere and wave at you. So there's that. And then some of the cues when you go on to rides do a lot of storytelling that preps you for the ride. And a lot of those are just being bypassed right now. So that's a little disappointing if you're not already familiar with the ride. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it for changes right now during this pandemic. Hopefully things are better now. Um, so then, day three, where'd we go? All right, so on day three we went to Hollywood Studios. Yeah! Which I guess if you're gonna compare Walt Disney World to Disneyland, I guess that's the one that's closest to Disney's California Adventures. Um, this is where Tower of Terror is, it's where uh, Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story Land are, and then of course the brand new uh, Mini Mickey's Runaway Railway, 
So that was a very exciting one. I enjoyed that park. What did you think? Yeah, that park was pretty funny. It was much more compact, which was good for us and the kids because there wasn't a lot of walking. Um, I mean, obviously, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is an amazing ride. So. Rise of the Resistance! How did I not mention that? I think this was like one of only two rides we actually had to wait for at any given point. Um, they still have the, the virtual queue going. The just, log in when you, when you get in the park deal. Just for Rise of the Resistance. Yeah. Yeah, they're not doing virtual queues for anything <clears> else. Um, but yes, um, we managed to get onto that, which would have been a gamble if parks were at full capacity. So thank goodness. Um, I really liked uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad. I thought that was a really cool ride. Um, it was the, that was my first time ever being in the trackless um, ride. So that was really interesting to, to see how they did that and what they were able to simulate uh, without even really moving much. Just with a little bit of motion in the car and some animation in the video around you was really, really awesome. Yeah, that ride was awesome. What's your other favorite? Slinky Dog. Slinky Dog Dash. That was a good little family coaster. Our kids really loved that one. Yeah. Um, for me, other than Rise of the Resistance, because you can't compare, um, definitely Tower of Terror. I wish that Disneyland wouldn't have rethemed theirs as much as I love Marvel. That Tower of Terror theme is way cooler than uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So. And I wouldn't be able to tell you because I don't do drops. Yeah, he's a baby. Day four! Where'd we go? Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom! <laughs> um, they do a really good job of making you feel like you're not at a zoo. Right. Yeah, it was really cool. The uh, the safari ride was was awesome. You were able to, to jump in a car, you know, a truck or whatever, and um, you go on this 4x4, four four, you know, safari ride, but it doesn't seem like you're in a zoo at all. You're... You know, you're looking at the lion and you're looking at it, but the way they, 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 they do the, uh, the hill and the moat and all that stuff, you can't even tell that it's there. So. Yep. Animal Kingdom is where Pandora is mm -hmm. as well. And Flight of Passage was such a cool ride. Yeah. Uh, highly recommend that. Um, and also, this is another one that normally has hour-long waits. Um, sometimes several hours, and how walk, long? walk right on. Yeah, there was there was literally as fast as you could walk through the queue, you were getting on the ride. Uh, by far, I think the most disappointing ride of of all of Disney World for me was the uh, the Cali Rapids uh, water ride. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We waited in such a long line because they were doing their clean. They're doing extra cleanings for the rides. It um, wasn't a long line. It was like thirty people, but they weren't moving because they were cleaning. Yeah. So they're yeah they're adding all these extra cleanings in right now, which I guess understandable. Whatever. Hopefully things are better now. <laughs> but I thought this was gonna be like such a thrill ride. <laughs> no. It's so boring. It was like one, one minute, small drop. One minute ride. Like I thought that it was we were gonna be like screaming and getting soaking <clears throat> wet and no. It was very underwhelming. Yeah. I got this shirt at Walt Disney World. <laughs> so do we recommend that you go to Walt Disney World during this twenty twenty weird pandemic? life we're living in. I do. How do we outro this? <laughs>